Coup d'état of 1966, led by Agunyi Ironsi, went on till 1979, with forceful takeover from Agunyi Ironsi to Yakubu Gowon that same year, to Murita Mohamed in 1975, to Olusegun Obasanjo in 1976, who decided to hand over to democratically elected president in 1979. Under the military administration, a military decree was used as opposed to the current civilian constitution. This style of governance allows for immediate, unchallenged promulgation of law by a group of single persons mostly used by military leaders, dictators or, ab or absolute monarchs. This allows a military leader to arbitrarily edit law without approval by a legislative assembly. While this is not the practice with democratic tenets, there has been some major development, though not without its attendant challenges of abuse. The use of decree has led to creation of states from initial four regions to 12 states, later to 19 states, then to 21 states, to 30 states, and now 36 states. For the residents and indigents of these states, the mention of military dictators in power when the states were created is like music to their ears. We wouldn't have had the states we have because it's easy to, uh, to, to enact a decree than to amend the constitution that will incorporate the issue of state creation. You know, you have to involve the entire federation. And as long as we have the North and South dichotomy, it will be very difficult for you to create any state, you know, without giving the North who has had undue advantage as a result of decrees that was used to create all the states before now. Under military regime, the president can just wake up, go to his uh, military council, or even if he pre prefer not to, enact any decree. But to enact a, I mean, enact a law under democracy, it takes time. Especially with our democracy we are practicing, it's a rigid constitution. So for you to amend the constitution, you have to have to thought of the entire federation. On the other hand, Constitutional democracy in itself indicates a form of government where all the state's decisions are exercised directly or indirectly by a majority of its citizenry through a fair elective process. A constitution is usually codified in a written document expressly stating the fundamental rules and principles that governs an administration. Nigeria's civil rule has been characterized by election, relative freedom of press, freedom of speech, human rights observance, and other democratic practices. Ironically, since return to democracy 21 years ago, the country has been governed by former military rulers for 14 years, eight years of Olusegun Obasanjo, and six years of Muhammadu Buhari still counting. This, political pundits say are responsible for some vestiges of authoritarianism still being experienced sometimes. The regular disobedience to court orders, the deliberate caging of the judiciary not being allowed to exercise its independence are part of the criticism against the supposed constitutional democracy. To the extent that um, we have a constitution, uh, an extant constitution, the 1999 constitution, um, I, I think that we can say we're practicing constitutional democracy, at least in a technical sense, the rule of law. Right. Um, so the, the issue has consistently been raised about the place of the rule of law uh, in the Nigerian uh, polity. And I'm talking about uh, respect for court uh, decisions, um, uh, the, the ability of the executive to subject itself to um, rules that are enacted not only in the constitution and, the, and in the statute. In Nigeria today, we operate under a democratic government. A constitution is used, and the federal government of Nigeria is composed of three distinct branches, legislative, executive, and judiciary. These respondents say their powers are vested in the constitution. They argue that if, indeed, it is true that the judiciary is the last hope of the masses, the survival of our fragile democracy largely depends on it. Ifeolu Shinkeye, PLOS TV Africa.
Welcome back. It's still our Independence Day special broadcast, and we are moving straight to the judiciary. Uh, earlier on, we played a report done by Ifeolu Aoshukeya, where he tried to chronicle what we encountered during the military when the decree was in use and uh, the constitution that we have now. So we are going to be doing a whole lot of uh, analysis on these issues. And we have what I describe as competent hands in the studio, live in the studio, so there's not going to be any network problem. Mm -hmm. Our own Liboros Oshoma, I don't know, I'm tired of calling him a lawyer because sometimes he speaks as an accountant, he speaks as uh, activist. activist, it's all around that. <laughs> Liboros Oshoma, good morning. And uh, happy independence. Um, yes, Whether I'm, it happy. Is happy. <laughs> I'm happy. <laughs> and I we have, to be happy. And we have uh, Dele Farotimi, the man I prefer, or because he prefers to refer to himself as a retired lawyer. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning, Mr. K. <laughs> I'm calling myself a retired lawyer is my way of divorcing myself of complicity hmm. in the judicial mess that we have in our country. So, yeah. Okay, I'm a retired lawyer. That's that's a, that's a good way to start this discussion, but I won't start with you now. Liberal uh, Sushuma, we might need a bit of education here. Um, some would say that um, if not for the decree, the states that some people celebrate today uh, wouldn't have happened, the creation of states. But let's look at the merits, if there are any or at all, about the decree we had and the constitution we're supposed to enjoy, and are we truly enjoying that? Um, if not that um, these states were decreed into existence, that probably we won't um, have states that we have today. Uh, can you, in all honesty, call what we have today as viable, you know, compared to the only one we have ever created through a referendum, that's the Midwestern states. And, and so for me, I, when I, people say, yes, we're celebrating state, state creation, and that, that they were decreed into existence. We probably ha would have um, done it you know, better, far better. The people would have had a voice in determining whether they want to, you know, uh, whether they wanted that state or they wanted those boundaries the way you know, it was proposed. It probably would have been better. And, and so I'm not um, one to sit down and begin to celebrate you know, um, things state that were creation. decreed into existence without... Um, you know, consult, consultation with the people, uh, coupled with the fact that, you know, we say, oh, yes, you had a, you, we have a 1999 constitution, but we also forget that it was decreed into existence. Uh, it, was, it, it was a schedule to decree 24 of 1999. Even people that participated in the election, a lot of them did not even see the constitution that, you know, they were haggling to rule it, uh, including the president then. So, you know, I'm not one to celebrate decrees, um, and it is obvious now, very, very, very visible to the blind and audible to the deaf, that these states that you are celebrating today uh, are not viable. Some of them can pay salaries until they go to, you know, a big brother center. You know, that's why I call it feeding bottle, you know, federal government, federal structure, until they get there to get bailout to pay. And, 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 and so, these same people that um, decreed these states into existence also decreed what you call a federal structure. Mm -hmm. uh, mind you, mind you, Agui Rossin was killed for running this unitary system of government that we run today, that we are running away from discussing. He was killed for, for you know, having a unitary system of government. But today, we, we, we cloak ourselves in a federal structure. But in recent sense, what we have is a unitary system. So okay. um, all of those uh, states' creation, um, that's not the way you create states. Okay, Let's get uh, uh, your thought. Even you say you prefer to be called a diverse lawyer. I don't know whether that will apply in the conversation, but let's get your thoughts on this even, uh, subject see, matter. There is, um, there is a peculiarly Nigerian predilection, and that is the one where we have a tendency to take a word and then infuse it with a uniquely Nigerian meaning. And then even the English wouldn't recognize their word anymore. <laughs> One of them <laughs> is the word federalism. Right. If Nigeria is a federation, I'm Chinese. Let that sink in. 
a friend of mine called it a fraud, a fraudal system. Another called it a feudal, feudal, I don't even know. It's a fraud. It is anything but federal. Nigeria is the only place in the whole world, and I stand to be corrected on this, where the federal government creates federating units. Yes. It is incongruous. It has never happened. It is not known to law or to the English language. It doesn't make sense. A federation means, and let's be clear about this, none of the regional leaders would have agreed to be part of a unitary Nigerian state. The leaders of the western part of Nigeria, I've read extensively, I've read Chivoba Femi Aulo's works, they always knew they were contending with a feudal force coming out of northern Nigeria. The only protection they could see which made them agree to a one Nigeria was that there would be a federal system with strong regions. That's true. That was the agreement. A state was stolen in 1966. And the bandits who stole Nigeria in 1966 have not left Nigeria. We lost our citizenship in 1966. We can go ahead and be banding words like federalism, unitarism. If you must call Nigeria anything, it's a unitary state. But foundational mm. to the mess and putrefaction you see all around you and why we are not happy on the occasion of the lie called independence 60 years ago is the realization that in truth and content, Nigerians have been reduced from citizens to subjects and serfs, and our rulers have become untouchable men who rule and govern with impunity. Okay. You choose to call them rulers. Okay. They, are not, they are not leaders. leaders. Don't no. kid yourself. Uh, uh, liberals, liberals uh, uh, my confusion with history here is that um, the military had been there, and the proper thing for them is to leave. And now, they had to leave, but they couldn't leave without a constitution. Mm -hmm. So I think the problem is, my opinion, it's the people that took over. What stops you? from giving us a new constitution. Why should we continue to say, oh, the military handed the constitution to uh, us and we refuse to do another draft? Uh, you, you see, um, let's, let's position history properly um, so that um, in time to come, you know, our names will be written in gold in the sand of time. You know, so when you talk about, oh yes, they handed you a constitution, um, first and foremost, I take your mind back to all the, the constitutional debates that led, that predated independence, and how heated those arguments and those meetings were. Where? And, and so, if you also remember, I take you, you back a little bit to the creation of states and the debates on federa federating unit between... Dr. Nandi Azikiwe and Chief of Bafemi Awolowo. Um, I've forgotten the journalist's name now, a British man. He said in his entire life, he had never seen a debate as robust as that, parliamentary debate as robust as that. You know, they took two days, the first day for Chief of Bafemi Awolowo and the next day for um, no. Nnamdi Azikiwe. And Nnamdi Azikiwe made, uh, Chief of Bafemi Awolowo made, you know, a very profound statement there that if you start creating states today, until Ikene, his hometown, becomes a state who will oh, not rest. Yes. Hmm. And so that's the kind of works that goes into making of a constitution. And, and so knowing fully well that, look, if, you, if you, you bring a bunch of people together, mm -hmm. knowing the ki kind of you know, mental capacity and intellectual um, tendencies that they have, you know, it would be difficult for them to agree to agree. Right from the sisters. Even in that debate, Nabi Azikwe made also another statement that when two incompatible mates, they can coexist if they agree to agree mm -hmm. or, and agree to disagree. disagree. But the question is, the people that we brought together in 19, 1999, were they the set of persons you truly would believe will sit down and agree to agree or agree to disagree? 
And that's why, even like I told you, even the Constitution, that they were to work with the document, no, none of them saw it. But there were people who had, you know, a few who had a common enemy in the military and others who, you know, in their quests for power and leadership, just felt, you know, any which way, any height let's goes, grab it. let us grab it. And so since that time, they have grabbed this power. To debate that document, your constitution, they also saw the benefit for them. And that's why before the because program... Because very unitary in nature. We were talking about um, mm. somebody you in, in the last guest talked about um, the, um, the parliament defeating Obasanjo's third term. And we joined the chorus. It wasn't because of the people. Mm -hmm. Because you had some other it's persons who were case. waiting to take over. And, and so the longer Obasanjo sits there, the shorter their time of taking over. And so that was the fight. It was a oh, class struggle. I understand. And, and so in the same vein, the people that the constitution were handed over to. That why did you think they select, carefully selected Obasanjo? Why not Olufalai? Why not Bolaige? Obasanjo was selected for a reason. Oh, yes, this selected. Man. Yes, in 1999. Wasn't elected. Is that he what was you mean? selected by the the okay. quote and unquote rulers who were living because they felt comfortable with him. Is the one who won't rock the boat. The one who won't change the status quo. Okay, and, and so. Over time, after that, that is why every year, every four years, it keep getting worse rather than, you know, uh, seeing improvement. Because you have the worst of us, so sum it up, because you have the worst of us Maybe ruling over the best, of, best us. of us. So you can never have a situation where the worst of you will sit down and say, let us agree to agree and agree to disagree. Okay. Uh, uh, I, 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 you just brought in another uh, aspect to this, and that, that um, I, I am asking, what does it take? How do we even achieve this? Because that's the way forward. And I'm sure that you have all the problems right on the palm of your hand. What's the way forward for what us to have? <laughs> uh, no, from what they've said now, they've dissected our <laughs> issues. But I'm looking at how do we actually Progress evolve this document? Because I've heard from some of your colleagues saying that sometimes the problem is implementation, that we could still make the best out of the document we have. Let's... Um the sooner we stopped lying to ourselves, the quicker we are likely to get to a resolution of our issues. If you have, if you have constructed a foundation and the design is intended to carry two levels, G plus two, that's a two-story building. And then you come round to the architect or the builder and you say, no, you see, I don't particularly like the idea of having a two-story building. Can we make it a nine-story building? The first thing that the architect or whoever, a responsible builder, will tell you is that you need a different foundation for the structure okay. that you want. Nigerians hate hearing these words, and I've said it ad nauseum, and it is the word, revolution. Revolutions don't necessarily have to be violent. It just means a turnaround. In Nigeria's case, the revolution we require is a change to that fraudulent 1999 constitution. The last, as Liberos has rightly pointed out, prior to the 1960 independence constitution, there were several constitutional conferences from Ibadan to Kaduna to Lancaster House to Lagos here to Enugu People argued back and forth. The minorities spoke their minds. They expressed yes. their fears. Mm. The fears of the minority led to the enshrinement of the Bill of Rights in the 1960 Constitution as a recommendation of the Willings Willing Commission. Commission. Hmm. Federalism was the binding glue that made people come together as Nigeria. How do you begin to perfect a unitarist document? The 1999 constitution is not designed for the people. It might pretend, it might lie and say, we the, we people. the people. None of us were ever consulted, and our interest does not matter to that document. But how did we allow it to go up until no, no, this no. time? Number one, mm -hmm. myself and liberals were talking. The first thing. There has for long been a mischaracterization of our struggle. Those who came before us, the generation before mine, the Ganifawe Imis, the Bela Nikolako, the Beko, 
they all thought it was a pro-democracy struggle because they were fighting to get rid of the military. Mm -hmm. The reality is that the moment the AD made this tragic error of compromising on restructuring in 1999 because it was politically expedient and allowed themselves to buy the fraud of power shift instead of demanding restructuring. And I say that they allowed themselves because the AD never qualified for registration. Mm. But it was registered mm. because the military could not have had a credible transition without the participation of Afeniferi Nadeko and the AD. They mm. could have demanded the same restructuring that we are now still begging for. The same thing that was demanded wow. in Eburi is wow. what we were... De Every time that the Nigerian people have sought to express their will, they've been smacked down. So when we're talking about perfecting this 1999 constitution, let me tell you straight up, however much you might pray, however much you might want it, you can will, you know, we, know, we, we pray a lot in Nigeria. We'll be making noise like bearded chicken. No matter how hard we pray, there is no way I can add an inch to my height. And I'm not going to grow as fair as my sister here. I'll remain the brown man that I am. The black those man. are facts. <laughs> well, those are facts. The 1999 constitution is incurably bad. It's a mm. fraud. It's a document for the enslavement of the Nigerian people. And we need to get rid of it if we must okay. have peace in okay. Nigeria. Uh, I, you, 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 you warned me before this mm -hmm. conversation. But liberals, I, I'll go back to examining the judiciary gen generally. And um, you might say, oh, I'm just, I'm, I'm thinking like a mediocre now in terms of what used to be under military and what we have now. There seems to be more freedom of press. There seems to be more form of expressions because I think if you were to do this during the military, they would be waiting for you outside the door. So how do we assess our level of um, Constitutional democracy, so to say. Is it 0%? I, I, I would also want to quickly thing? disagree. Okay. Um, that um, we talk more now than um, you know, under the military. Under the military, you had um, restricted you know, platforms for airing Expression. Your view. They were restricted. Now, a lot of people talk more. If you had WhatsApp at that time, maybe uh, IBB probably wouldn't have ruled for it for eight years or nine years that he ruled. They even listen more. IBB did once said something of um, Chief Ghani Fahimi that if there was any critique he respected, it was Chief Ghani Fahimi because he was consistent. And, and so, forget the fact that yes, this, some of these people, most of them were arrested. But today, you talk about freedom. How many of us are consistent? in demanding for that thing that, yes, this is the way to go. How many of us are consistent? So the thing is and you hear us you. argue PDP and APC as though, you know, the <laughs> alternative to one another. And yet you say freedom. And so that's why some people will still look at you and say, oh, I wish the Ghani Fahemi is the Bekor and some Kutis were alive today. I wish you could still have the like of um, uh, Fela Nikola Kukuti. Because under these circumstances, their voice were heard the loudest. But today, that you say, oh, yes, you have a constitutional democracy, there's freedom to talk. How many of those talks have we been consistent with? That's for me, should be the question. And not whether we're under the military. For military government in the first place, they knew that it was an aberration. And they also knew that they were in a terrain that they shouldn't be. So at every turn, they were always, we had more protests under military than under democracy. Despite the fact that they will tell you, don't go out there to protect. You had the anti sap riots? I mean, because this one is government of the people, yeah. by well, definition. That's, that's your I mean, okay, by definition. Of, we have been so when you, also look at, when you also look at the, the interpretation of the laws by the Supreme Court then, you also look at what we have now in your own analysis. Clearly, can you say that when you had the likes of Oputa GSC, when you had the likes of Ogudare GSC, when you had um, the likes of um, 
um, uh, uh, Otutu Obaseki and the rest. And can you truly compare, in all honesty, this set of, you know, um, judges with what you have now at the Supreme Court, where even somebody will tell you that this judgment, even a year one lawyer, will tell you that this judgment it's cannot possible. stand the test of time mm. in law. But, uh, you know, so when you put all of this together, you find out that the people we had then, had, had, because of the vociferousness of, you know, all, a lot of us Nigerians, even our leaders, our rulers, then at every turn were consistently looking behind their back because they know that Nigerians were not happy and that we, we insisted. And why do you think also, like Dilea said, that when... In 1999, pre the election in 1999, the unitary, the military government wanted you know, every part of Nigeria to accept or participate in the election, the proposed election. But today, we conduct election and we don't even care whether you participate or whether you accept. You know, we just say election at hand. If you don't, and then you hear a, a governor or a president tell you, if you are not happy with the outcome, go to court. Hmm. You know, so when you just oppose this, really, and that's why the only answer you get is, the good old days. Yeah, but that's where my confl I'm conflicted, you know, and really frustrated, so to say. Yes, because all the time we make reference to the good old days, and just like you're saying, that we didn't have those voices. Are you in any way implying that even in the system, even where we are, there are no voices or the voices have been compromised? Otherwise, in another 60 years, if we're still here, this same line of thought will quickly, continue and the quickly, conversation will be the quickly, same. Quickly, the voices are fewer, and, and that's why you will hear the same set of people that demanded for subsidy removal, the same set of people that demanded for fight against corruption, the same set of people that proposed how Nigerian can be better. Now you have them in leadership, and they do the exact opposite of what they had proposed before so now. What, the same the set of power? people that told you, oh, um, TM, or, or what do you call it, that police commissioner, that said fire at shot for any, fire at sight anybody that snagged ballot box. Mm. Yeah. Those same people that criticize him. Joseph Mbu. Uh, uh, okay. Joseph Mbu. They are the same people that will endorse Buhari's statement when he says fire okay. at sight anybody that snagged ballot paper. And those that, that eulogize him then will criticize okay. him. Once Mr. Faro, the, the me, I, 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 I want you, uh, you, you made a very, very controversial statement, statement when you said that you don't want to be accused of complicit in terms of the judiciary. Can you just do an assessment of the judiciary? Look, because the, forget the, remember the mantra, the last hope of the masses, as it in any way. <laughs> that last hope of the masses was the first frontier that was lost in the war that took away the freedom of the Nigerian people. When I said that I do not want to be deemed complicit in the mess that the judiciary has become, I'm a lawyer. It's, for me, law is something of a calling. I have always wanted to be one. But I became a lawyer, and I quickly found that our courts are not any different from our police stations. Hmm. I found very quickly that what ails the Nigerian custom ails the Nigerian judiciary. I found very quickly that the Nigerian judiciary is peopled by Nigerians. They are not from Ghana. And I say without any equivocation that the Nigerian judicial system is as corrupt as any other part of our yeah. nation. That's a fact. We can go around dancing around the issues. But I have seen judgments from the lowest court to the highest in Nigeria today, that you can only blame either on incompetence on the part of the jurists mm. or corruption. You can take your pick. Now, I am not unaware of the reflexively defensive posture that most judicial officers and lawyers would take. Those are false umbrages. We can stop lying to ourselves. Some of these corrupt judgments are even more or less institutionalized when it has been convenient for the executive to coerce the judiciary into making pronouncements, it has happened. The Abacha's son that was freed in exchange for money in this country, where charges were dropped, we were all, in, we were all alive now, we saw it. And there are cases, especially when it comes to land matters, 
Now, if you move away from that and then you look at the access to justice, let's take Shouwere's case, for instance. <laughs> Shouwere was arrested ostensibly for treason. He was taken before a court. My own belief is that there should be justice for the accused, just as there should be justice for the accuser, but there should also be justice for the state. When you're speaking about justice, you're suggesting that as the statue of justice, the goddess of justice, that statue you see before court, mm -hmm. you find that it's blindfolded, it's holding a scale, and it's, it's got a sword. It's actually telling you three things. I don't see you. So who you are does not mm -hmm. matter. Not I will treat all of you exactly the same. He's holding a scale. He's saying, I am just. I will measure you equally, mm -hmm. the same way. If you have found one thing, my sword is waiting to punish the person who is found wanting. So there is a presumption of equality before the law. There is a presumption of equal access to that justice. And immediately you're saying that the law rules over all. So each person at every point in time knows what their rights and obligations are. Oh. And the law is there as an impartial arbiter. Hmm. The Nigerian state functions because it is above the law. If it ever subjects itself to the law, the Nigerian will state will collapse on its own weight. Wow. Wow. That, In an attempt, statement. no, but did, how, how else would you have managed to preserve, how would you have? We have a dysfunctional system. Have, do mm -hmm. I need to tell you we have a dysfunctional? <laughs> take a drive around any part of Nigeria. I don't need to tell you we have a dysfunctional system. So why can't we work as a functional because, state if we have a because, law that's existed? Because when we were done decaying the infrastructures of Nigeria around the 90s, 80s, late 80s, early 90s, the human brain began to decay. Liberals can talk about the quality of jurists in the high court, in the higher court. He can talk about that, comparing them to those like Olata Wura, like, yeah. like uh, so many of the, the, the people like, there, was, there are so many good juries, Oputa and the rest of them. If you begin to compare them to the current set, you are being unfair to the current set okay. because you're suggesting that you are getting something different from what the system intended to produce. Wow. So basically, it's a systemic issue. It so, is uh, a systemic uh, issue. Uh, I, I am tempted to say that we could continue, but mm. we just have uh, two or three minutes to round up. Let me get your no, final no. thoughts on this for one and a half minutes on the way forward. I know MBA has promised us a, a paradigm shift. I know... Um, the president has also <laughs> mentioned smile, that uh, very, very cynical <laughs> smile. Yeah. The president has also promised to deepen the, the democratic culture. What's the way forward? <laughs> <laughs> You're on international TV. Right. Okay, you let me get your thoughts. Seriously. No, seriously. These are, you know, sometimes when somebody describes. You have one and a half minutes now, your time is counting. A comic circus. You know, these are statements that make people. See it like that. You, you know, you can't give what you do not have. That, like we say in law, Nemo that code non habit. Uh, you know, you can't give what you don't have. So, how do you deepen democracy when you are very, very undemocratic? That's a, a aside. And then, secondly, it's uh, not a rhetorical NBA, question. It's, no, it's, it's a yeah. question that will be answered. Yes, be, yes by the people that's what I'm telling you. There's no way the president can deepen democracy when democratic institutions, as we speak now, nobody's even looking at. You know, where, do you know the chairman of um, the electoral body in America? Nobody bothers about him, even in Ghana here. So, and here we are, we're talking about deep in democracy, and INEC is the way it is, you know. So, uh, because of time, that's why I said I don't want to go, you know. And then NBA talking about the judiciary, we've said it. When, in a state of lawlessness, it is illegal to be law-abiding. What you have, including in the judiciary, is lawlessness. And so, how do you now deepen or create, you know, an arm of government, you know, from a lawless, you know, society, lawless situation. You now say, okay, yes, this arm of government would be the one that will um, uphold the law. 
when even the way some of the judges are appointed is lawlessness. The last set of judges that were appointed at the FCT High Court. Inheritance. Exactly. So if you run through the list, it was a list of, you know, please, the bearer is from me, interview and employ. Wow. And so when you have that kind of foundation, they list said it, 40 foundation, and then you now say you want to clean up from the top, it will collapse like a pack of cards. Uh, and so there is no way, no matter how long we sit down here to say moving forward, the state is, is, is um, higher than the judiciary. And when the state is higher than the judiciary, you're consistently going to have okay. the kind of judiciary that you have that won't be able to do anything. Our own, our own um, goddess of justice has, you know, it's not blindfolded. <laughs> it's, 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 it sees. It sees everything. Everything is not blindfolded. So it, 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 it exactly it chooses mm -hmm. when to give justice, and that's why I will end by saying, like African China said, "Poor man when steal money, you go see him face for crime fighter. Mm. But rich man when steal money, you know go see him face wow. for crime fighter." So we have to give you all. Yeah, You're okay with what we you have just, said? No, we are just. So let's, <laughs> <laughs> let's give him his one. Yeah, deliver the long bombshell. <laughs> so way forward. We, Look, there must be a way forward. Yeah, there must be. If I felt there wasn't a way forward, I would have packed my bags and baggages. I have friends in the Gambia. They will be happy to have me, and I'm black enough to pass for one. Kobe <laughs> Madingo, so I'm sure they would have me gladly. But I continue to hope, and I hope and believe in the essential goodness of the Nigerian spirit. I know that over 99% of us want a better country. But that better country can only happen when the judiciary itself is independent. But the independence of the judiciary that is not anchored to a systemic change and a national transformational movement, because the putrefaction has seeped through each and every one of us. We've become like people who live next to a public toilet. We don't smell anymore, and we are eating our meals on consent. Wow. Such an analogy. Yeah. We need to critically examine ourselves and know that we need to turn around. Okay. Thank you so much, Dele Faro Timi, a lawyer and uh, public affairs Retired. analyst. Retired. I'm not one of them again. Okay. <laughs> Retired lawyer. And we have liberals in Oshoba, who still yes. goes to court <laughs> and is still a proud lawyer, right? And, and Dele was my mate in law school. Wow. wow. So and you I haven't seen him since the bushes of Bwari <laughs> until today. <laughs> you, 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 awesome. owe us, you owe us awesome. something for bringing both of you exactly. together. We're happy to yeah, Don't worry. So I'll give you new face masks. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.